Hey guys, it's Glenn Matthewson with buildingcodecollege.com. I'm also the author of the Know the Code column in Fine Home Building Magazine. And the new edition just came out with my article, Back to the Attic. And I thought I would do a quick video and share with you guys a little bit of code research that I did on one little thing in here that you might have picked up on. So check it out. Now some of you may notice in this paragraph right here, I start talking about the attic access. And you note I'm referring to combustible construction and talking about there being combustible construction and that requiring the access. So let's dig into that little part of this article. So if we go to the 2021 IRC and we open this up to the end of chapter nine, we find right here a paragraph about attic access. And notice it starts off by saying buildings with combustible ceiling or roof construction shall have an access opening. So, curious. It's only required when it's combustible ceiling or roof construction. Now, before we dive into understanding that uh, in the IRC for residential construction and we look at all the history, let's real quick just look at the current 2021 International Building Code for commercial occupancies. And here, if we go to the end of chapter 14 for interior environment, we see this section here about access to unoccupied spaces. And there it just clearly states that an attic uh, access is required, an opening, blah, 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 shall be required, and we don't get any discussion of what type of building, whether it's combustible construction, just simply that if you've got an attic and you've got the clear headroom of 30 inches, you need to have access. So that's interesting, right? One of them, access for all attics, one of them only talks about combustible construction. All right, let's start digging in and doing some research. So a great place to start for modern research in your codes are the commentaries produced by ICC. Now, I don't have the 2021 commentary, but this section of the code hasn't been changed in quite a long time. So we're going to look at 2018. Now, if we open up the commentary to this and we come here to attic access, we are going to get a commentary that refers to right over here. Oops. Right here, if we read right in this part, it says, the requirement for an attic access is predicated on the likelihood that during the life of the structure, access to an attic space for repair of piping, electrical, and mechanical systems will be required. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because that little bit of commentary does not help us understand anything about why the very first part of the access says, buildings with combustible ceiling and roof construction. Combustible construction wouldn't have anything to do with what the commentary says about a likelihood of access for repair of piping, electrical and mechanical. And so that really doesn't help us very much. We gotta go further back. We gotta do more digging. Now the oldest commentary I have for a one and two family code would be the predecessor to the IRC, which is the CABO 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code. The IRC commentary and the IRC provisions all the way back to 2000 look exactly like what I just showed you. So if we come in here to the CABO 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code, we have a section. This is, oh, by the way, this is from uh, 1986. So this is the 1986 CABO Code. And this just happens to be the oldest commentary I have. But if we go here, we can go into Addict Access. And this doesn't provide the code section, just the commentary for it. But it says what exactly what it says in the 2018 IRC commentary. The requirement for Addict Access is predicated upon the likelihood, da 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 da, about access for piping, electrical, and mechanical. Again, no mention about why the IRC only requires this in combustible construction. So. This, though, gives us an idea of perhaps the origin of the current IRC commentary back from 1986. But, you know, let's go ahead and look at the 1986 CABO and see what the actual code section says. We only read the commentary. Now, if you look here in the code section, well, it actually doesn't talk about combustible construction. 
So we are left wondering why this addict access must be there. And maybe the commentary is correct that it's just there to get access to repair of electrical equipment, piping, etc. Hmm. So let's go forward in time a little bit before we go further back in time. So without opening up all three of these books, you'll just have to take my word for it. This was the last of the Cable 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code. And just like the 1986, it does not refer to combustible construction. Here was a short-lived 1998 edition of the International 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code. This was prior to coming up with the IRC. But this is when ICC is formed and we're bringing those legacy codes together. This also does not refer to combustible construction. It's not until the very first draft of the 2000 IRC that we do see the terms in roof and ceiling construction of combustible construction. That now becomes the trigger for that access. And that's what you see me describe and explain in the fine home building article. Okay, so that's where the switch happened from the CABO to the IRC that's when the combustible construction came into play. But we're not done yet figuring this out. And we can go back as far as we can for the Cable 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code to the first ever 1971 edition. This is when those four legacy organizations first came together to do one national residential code. So this is kind of cool. If we look here, there's no words at all, no provisions, nothing about access for the attic. All you're provided is this figure and this little note right here that says you need the scuttle hole. What is that? 22 by 30 scuttle. And that's it. So obviously no discussion about access for repairs or about it being related to combustible construction. Okay, so that ends it for residential codes. But we still haven't figured out why we see this disconnect. Why access is for combustible construction in the IRC. So if we look at the building code commentary, I don't have very many of these, but I do have a 2006 edition. The IBC is the same going all the way back to the 2000 edition in that it requires this access regardless of combustible construction or not. But what I find interesting is in the IRC where it's related to combustible construction, the commentary only talks about access for repairs. But if we go to the IBC, where it's required for all addicts, as you see here, no distinction about combustible construction only. But when we go to the commentary, now we start to get more clues. Access to the attic provides a convenient and non-destructive means for fire department personnel to visually check for an attic fire, and if need be, gain entry to the concealed spaces and suppress a fire. So here in the IBC, we actually get no discussion about access for repairs like we get in the IRC. All right, let's keep digging. Now we're gonna jump way back to the very first 1927 Uniform Building Code. This is not the original. I don't like handling that book too much. This was a reprint made in the 80s, but it's the identical text. If we come into here, we find this section about access to roof spaces. And here we get the statement all buildings shall have access provided to the attic space by means of a stairway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we get into the size of that attic opening. But here we start out in 1927, again, not speaking specifically to combustible construction. There is a talk of type three and four when it comes to the opening and where the opening's located. But the requirement for the attic space is for all attics and not related to combustible construction. That was from 1927. Now that language in the 1927 UBC held all the way until the 1964 edition of the Uniform Building Code. And when we come into here, we can see that it was revised. And now, look what it says. Attic access openings shall be provided in the ceiling of the top floor for buildings with combustible ceiling or roof construction. So in 1964, it went from access for all attics to only specifying access when you have combustible construction of the roof assembly. Interesting. Okay, let's look now at the handbook to the Uniform Building Code. This is basically like the commentary books that we see in the I-codes today. This is for the 1988 Uniform Building Code. 
Ooh, happens to be the oldest one I have. And if you look here, you can see that this has been in section 3205 in the UBC, all the way since that original one. And notice it's lumped in together with draft stopping, ventilation, and um, fire blocking as well in these other codes. So we get some clues that this was very much related to combustible construction. And, of course, in the handbook here in 1988, this is after the 1964 change to make it only in combustible construction, look at how our uh, handbook reads. Enclosed attics provide an avenue for the undetected spread of fire in concealed spaces. Therefore, the code requires access openings be provided into the attic so the firefighting forces may gain entry to fight the fire. So this is, again, very, very similar to the commentary discussion in the IBC, that the attic access is about access for fire protection, fire evaluation, and firefighting. Again, no discussion in this document about access for the sake of repairing mechanical and electrical equipment and piping. All right, now let's look at our friends on the East Coast that were writing the BOCA code, the BOSCA Basic Building Code. Uh, attic access first appeared in this code in 1981. And if we look here, we can find that section right here under 1420.9. Oops, scroll it down attic access. And here we get that same 22 by 30 inch attic access and no mention of it only being in combustible construction. However, take a look at what section 420 is all about. This is all about attics and concealed spaces, ventilation in attics, draft stopping in attics, and if we turn the page, section 420 is fire stopping and draft stopping. And section 421, 420.1, refers to um, preventing the free passage of flame and products of combustion through concealed spaces. And again, likely speaking to combustible construction here, based on the section we're under, but when you read the actual section, it does not refer to only access being required in roofs of combustible construction. However, we're not done. Let's look at a commentary now for the Boca Code. Now, I don't have this for that 1981 I just showed you, but the oldest I do have is for 1993. And the provision didn't change from 81 to 93. If we flip this open and we come to the area about access for addicts, well, it reads a whole lot like the UBC handbook and the IBC. Access to the attic provides a means for fire department personnel to visually check for fire involvement of an attic space, etc., etc., etc. So, again, fire is going to move a lot better through combustible attics, but this particular code doesn't speak specifically to that. All right, now I can't leave out our southern friends with the Southern Building Code Congress International, and here is a copy of their second edition building code. I believe this one is from, yeah, 1945. So there's more Southern codes we could look at, but let's just wrap this up and not leave out these folks. If we come here to section 1704.9, we see that it says all buildings shall have a scuttle or opening through the ceiling and into the roof attic. However, though it says all buildings, what is chapter 17? Well, chapter 17, if we come over here to the beginning, it is for wood construction. So by default being in chapter 17, all buildings require the attic to access all buildings of wood construction. All right. And so I just wanted to take you through that research because that's the kind of research that I do every time I write a Know the Code article or any time I prepare any type of code educational material because it's important that I don't just disregard these words. And this is why I take the moment to describe and discuss combustible construction needing the attic access in this article. And it's why further I over here I discusses how this access is not required only if you have mechanical equipment up there. It's always required in combustible construction by the IRC and in all construction by the IBC. But the irony to that is the IBC commentary and history of commentary from BOCA and the Uniform Building Code 
is that the access is related to access for firefighters, but yet it's for all buildings. But in the IRC, it's only for combustible attics and roofs, yet the commentary simply says that it's for access to piping mechanicals and electrical. And this is why it's important and always valuable to read and learn and use the IRC and ICC commentary books, but to understand they're not the end all be all to what we can learn about the history of these codes, how they came to be, and how they're really intended to be applied in today's world. Hope you enjoyed.